Greetings. This is a different kind of video that I have never done before, so I hope this turns out pretty well. I have been asked over the last couple of episodes that I've put out to show how I did some of the special effects. Most of what I'm going to show was native to me uh, by default by Vegas Pro 19, which is what I use. Now, I know for a fact that a lot of these things are available in like Adobe Premiere, and these are all also doable in like DaVinci, provided you have the right special effects templates. Now, I don't know where to get these templates. Um, you'll have to do some searching if they're not available to you, but I can show you how. So the first thing we're going to do is cover how I did the blue screen. So we're going to take this video file right here, which is the default replay mod file that I had uh, for my first episode. You can see the pan that I did and the initial look. Now, obviously, I'm in a, on a blue screen room. Now, if I click this event FX button here, it shows me all the event special effects I have available. And you can see that off the side here, I can see them. And what I'm going to choose here is Chroma Keyer, which brings it up. Now, for Vegas, if you click this little thing right here, it turns the effect line off. So this effect is still here, but it's been disabled. Then come down here, click this little dropper, and click this. And now you effectively have a proper color match for that. It's not always 100% because you run into situations like this. And that is where these sliders come in. So the high level threshold is the contrast that it picks up or drops behind. So I wanted this part to be a bit lighter and this part to be kind of disappearing and, and like vanish. So I turned the high threshold up just down a little bit and I turned the low threshold up, which makes this completely disappear. So now if I unmute this line, we can see the fog behind it. Now remember, it's always going to render from top down. If you have this line and this line backwards, it's going to look like this. If this is what you're going for, perfect. But in my case, I felt like this was obstructing too much of the view. And I only wanted it in the background because I wanted the focus to be this character. This principle works on anything you throw in here. And it often will also work in programs like paint.net or Photoshop. Uh, After Effects, stuff like that. Anything that you've got multiple layers, it's always going to render from the top down. Now, the other thing was the sepia TV effect that people asked about. So now we're going to take the same idea and we're going to layer another effect on top of it, which is the sepia effect. So when I did this initially, what I did, we're going to cut this right here so we don't have Minecraft Steve in the way. We'll use this one. I'm going to come up here, click Save Snapshot to File. It puts me in my Autocraft folder. Now we're going to take this and this. We're going to move it completely out of the way. Now, these two things, this has no sound. So I don't know how this works in most other different video, ed video editing applications, but for Adobe, uh, I mean for Vegas, if I right click, go to group and remove from, then these two things are now independent and I can just delete it. So if you don't have sound attached to footage, it actually makes it go faster because it's not trying to process it. And just it makes the whole thing cleaner. It's just easier that way. But now we're going to take this image. We're going to drop it in right here. So we want to do the same basic effects. But now this image has got this background effect on it, which is perfectly fine because you can actually merge it with this. And you can go from here to here. And there's no difference aside from like, you know, the fog not actually being there anymore. Now we're going to add two things. The first one is we're going to add the old film, film grain, which of course is now behind because of the blue screen. So we're going to move this over, slide this, and we're going to put it in front. But you can't see anything, right? Oh, so hit U, delete. So what I did is I took this and I just dropped the opacity just enough that it passes through, right? So now we need to add the CP effect. So for me, I just used this effect right here called very old, old film, and I just dropped it right on top. And I adjusted the grain and the tint a little bit, just enough that you can kind of see what was happening. You can turn the grayscale on and off, but I liked it better with because it felt a little bit more older, like it was like kind of like worn through time and use, and I left it. And that affects the whole thing. And it looks pretty good. And now I can transition this over with a nice fade. 
Like so? And with the proper sound effects, that sounds really good. Okay, so I've cleared the timeline. Let's put these things together in practice just to show you how it works. So we're going to take this footage, we're going to drop it in, and this is the original replay footage. Now, we don't want to see Minecraft Steve in the very beginning because that's how he shows up. So we're just going to pan frame by frame, which I do by holding Alt. Zoom in real close, hit S, which is me for split clip and delete that part and move it forward. So this is the initial shot we want to start with, but we don't want this blue screen. We want the fog. So we're going to drop the fog in. Oh, there it is. That happens. We're going to scroll out. We're going to hit effects. We're going to come in here. We're going to choose chroma gear. And we're going to choose my custom default. Boom. Not seen. We can't see it because the fog is in the wrong area. We don't need this. I'm going to hit U to drop it from the group. Delete it. Nope, not that. Again, we're going to hit U to drop it from the group. Hit, hit delete it. And now we need to be able to see the fog when it starts, not further in. So we're going to watch it just for a little bit, see when the fog shows up to a satisfactory degree. Uh, at about. A little bit too bright. We'll start about there. All right. So in this case, I am just going to split the clip. Turn it back just a little bit like this. And we want this to be our opening screenshot. So we're going to take a screenshot, click Save, which automatically puts it in. Take these things, move it down. Drop this image in here. We're going to add the old film grain. We're going to extend this out just a little bit. We want the film grain on top. We're going to put this on the bottom and we're going to drop the opacity. Which is pretty good. Here, find film effects. Right there. And we're just going to kind of play with it. Actually, let's just choose very old film because that's the default and it's one I know I can use. If we come here, that looks pretty good. Now we need to add the sound effects. Media, and we're going to use this. I want it to stop about there because I want it to pan over. So we're going to stop this here. And we're going to merge this down, this down. And take these. Because I want these two to be locked together, I'm going to right click, go to oh, group, create new. So now these two are locked no matter what. Which means I can set it and then move it around and not have to worry about it. So if you're doing lots of little cuts, because you want all these cuts to stay together, then you can put them as one group and it doesn't matter what you do, they always stay. So if you accidentally move one, you move them all, you don't have to readjust all of them independently, which is great. So we can just take this, move it over this way and over this way. Move this back just a little bit. And then we have this transition here. Still a little bit too long. But for the sake of argument, we're going to leave it. So now we want to add more sound effects to the ship. Let me grab those real quick. Add a creaky old wooden sound effect wooden ship. And we're going to fade this in about the same time that it starts to fade out. A little bit loud, so we're going to turn it down just a little bit. And that, in short, is my opening to my first episode. So once you know how all these things go together, once you know what you're looking for, this took us, what, uh, less than four minutes to do.
this is just about experience and figuring out the layers and how to put them down so it transitions the way you want it to. And this is the part that takes the most time because this just takes practice. But that's it. Spend some time in your effects. Go through them. Pull them on. See what they do. Because some of these look, well, that looks kind of neat. But what's it? I, that, I understand visually what that is supposed to look like. But you're not going to know what that actually looks like until you pull the effect on and you start looking at it. Because this does not look like this, in my opinion. This is very, very different. And it makes everything look a little bit different. So spend the time figuring out how the effects work inside your framing. And you might be surprised at what you can do and where your creativity goes with it. And if you just have, well, I wish I could do this. Find something close enough and see if you can adjust it to do that. This is very much like making Minecraft videos and you're making builds. Don't be afraid to experiment because you can always undo it. And if you're concerned about if it looking bad, save it to a different file. If you look here, I have <laughs> two different save files for my first episode. Because I didn't know if I wanted that name and I didn't know if I wanted this name and I wanted to change certain key things about it. But I loaded this one, changed huge chunks of the timeline and saved it as this one. So I had them both. So I didn't completely hamstring myself in the process. Anyway, this is really the bulk of all of it. It's nothing overly complex. It's just familiarity and learning what your special effects do and spending the time to do it. I hope this helped you out. I hope you learned something from this. And uh, I will see you next time. Bye for now.